many of us get questions from our primary care colleagues and try to support and provide guidance with some answers. Here's a common one. In a patient with dementia, how should I manage agitation? Of course, after an appropriate diagnostic assessment looking for things like pain and dehydration and fever, the first line options are environmental, regular physical activity, familiar music, and combined stimuli such as small tasks and reading and live social interaction. But beyond that, what are the options? The NICE guidelines, that's the National Institute for Healthcare Excellence, associated with the UK's National Health Service, specifically recommend against the use of antipsychotics, except when there is a risk of harm to self or others or severe distress. Perhaps as an alternative, you've suggested mirtazapine for nighttime sedation. Many of our colleagues have. It accounted for over a third of all new prescriptions for patients with dementia in one recent study. Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. Let's look at a randomized trial of mirtazapine for agitation in dementia. It's great to have data on such a commonly used generic medication like mirtazapine, especially since this was not a little pilot study. It had 200 participants across the UK. In their introduction, the authors note that in a given month, agitation is experienced by nearly half of all patients with Alzheimer's, and 80% of those cases persist to have agitation six months later. Their study was prompted in part by increasing recognition of a need for an alternative to antipsychotics, which have, quote, little or no efficacy, close quote, according to American Psychiatric Association guidelines, and pose significant risks. For example, in the UK in 2009, among people with dementia, antipsychotics were associated with 1,800 deaths and 1,500 cerebrovascular adverse events. So, how about mirtazapine? The study was designed just as we'd wish, very few exclusion criteria so as to maximize generalizability, and the primary outcome measure was a standard agitation inventory. The authors required evidence that the etiology of agitated behavior had been investigated and that it had not responded to non-pharmacological management. So, how did mirtazapine do relative to placebo? At 6 and 12 weeks after inception of the study, mirtazapine was no better than the placebo. So this is a negative study. Glad that it was published. What doses were they using? Well, everyone started at 15 milligrams and then increased every two weeks by 15 milligrams to a target of 45 milligrams nightly if tolerated. At the end of the study, the average dose was 30 milligrams. So they pushed it pretty hard, and still it did not work better than a placebo. Moreover, although the total number of adverse events did not differ between mirtazapine and placebo, seven of the patients in the mirtazapine group died versus one in the placebo group. But the cause of those deaths displayed no particular pattern, and the difference was only marginally statistically significant, 0.065. A previous similarly large study found citalopram significantly better than placebo for agitation in Alzheimer's dementia, but among 95 patients on citalopram, three had QT prolongation, and that was with a dose that began at 10 milligrams but targeted 30 milligrams daily, and 80% of the patients in the study achieved 30 milligrams. The authors of that study concluded that despite the improvements noted, Quote, citalopram showed mild cognitive and concerning cardiac adverse events and cannot be generally recommended as an alternative treatment at that dose, close quote. Only 15% of their patients were taking 20 milligrams, and that wasn't a random group, so efficacy at that lower dose can't be assessed. So, sorry, these studies only tell you what not to do, neither mirtazapine nor higher dose citalopram. They don't tell you what works. Nevertheless, there are four clear conclusions. The first three come directly from this new study and the last from the citalopram study. Number one, the first line of management for agitation in dementia is a full assessment to identify any potentially modifiable causes for the behavior, such as infection, pain, 
hypoxia. Number two, in all but the most urgent of situations, the next line is non-pharmacological treatment because such approaches have been shown to be at least as effective as drug treatment. Number three, this study of mirtazapine found benefits no greater than from placebo and seven deaths versus one among the placebo patients, which though not statistically very significant, raises concerns about safety. And number four, by contrast, citalopram 30 milligrams per day was significantly more effective than placebo, but it was associated with QT prolongation in 3% of patients, and there is no clear data on 20 milligrams. So these are the responses with which you could answer your primary care colleague when they call looking for guidance for a patient with agitated dementia. Be gracious. Begin by noting that they very likely know the general principles just discussed, and then regret that the latest data don't lead to great new options.